Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, uh, this is just uh, to have a little chat about uh, marker pens, uh, a paint marker. This is the Edding 750 and this was recommended by one of my uh, fellow uh, creators uh, because I've been struggling to uh, find something that will stay on. Uh, these are the Marfonia, we're going to be uh, doing a reveal of those uh, shortly and uh, I've been uh, quite impressed with them and uh, they, uh, they come like that and you have to press this up and down which pumps the paint, shake it as well and then uh, you get the, uh, the paint, uh, the marker pen uh, on the nib and uh, I found them uh, really really good uh, nice fine line and uh, somebody asked me how I made my plant labels where they're just bits of uh, old corex that's uh, not used anymore some yellow tape I've got some wider than others and it does fold round but we can't be can't beggars can't be choosers uh, when it uh, when it comes for free and let's find the right one and it does uh, just come up uh, nice clear and it does stick uh, which is the main thing so before I do the uh, potato reveal just in case uh, people are only here to see uh, this marker pen uh, then uh, I'll, uh, I'll nip across now and we'll come back and do the uh, potato reveal uh, afterwards uh, so uh, my uh, channel is all about allotment gardening logging and storage um, so uh, if you're interested in gardening why not consider subscribing so this is one of the uh, first labels that uh, we did uh, the one on the right is I actually sprayed some sealant over the top but it's made no difference at all to the one on the left with just that uh, 750 so that was one of the first ones I've done quite a few uh, months ago and uh, if anything uh, that one there uh, is uh, just coming a little bit loose but other than that no i've been uh, really pleased uh, with this uh, actual marker pen And the uh, elephant garlic that we planted in the normal direction has just started to come up now. And uh, the upside down bulb challenge, uh, there's no show on here, which is what we'd probably expect. These uh, sprouts are bulking out now since I uh, took the tops off. Uh, taking the tops off should stop them uh, blowing from the bottom but as you can see uh, i'm taking them from uh, the bottom and this wet weather's not doing them uh, any favors whatsoever but we can't help the weather guys the old broad beans are doing well uh, the bunyards uh, exhibition and i've relabeled all the potatoes now in the uh, the permanent bed which we saw in uh, a previous video and like we've said before the UK has been absolutely hit with loads and loads of rain in the autumn through to the winter and all these barrels are full now and my challenge to myself was to uh, get these barrels in reasonably level so that when the uh, the siphoning system worked uh, we didn't lose any water anywhere in particular and if anything that's the barrel that's overflowing but I'm uh, well pleased with that uh, and this little bit of support on the pipes uh, does help especially when you uh, cut the holes out you've got nice uh, nice easy access you don't disturb the hoses and they can continue siphoning so as we take water out this barrel it'll drag it from all the others vice versa 
I've uh, been playing with the polytunnel. We're going to be raising this polytunnel up uh, about a metre from the uh, original surface. There's the four by fours, four inch by four inch, sitting on the, uh, the road kerbs. Still got bits to do, but I've had to, the whole point all has got to come this way because of the barrels, but uh, that won't hurt and uh, I might even have all the barrels down here using the siphoning system all the way to the bottom, we will see. And uh, we're here at the uh, Wildflower Wildlife uh, Garden, uh, just tidied that up a little bit and uh, tried not to tread on the uh, those large poppies and uh, as you can see there as well I've done a cracking job and uh, I'm really pleased with that and that's a big thanks to Southpaw Davy Urban Farm that's Southpaw Davy Urban Farm pop and visit his channel and uh, I just wrap that wire around as a bit of an idea and it's uh, working well I've uh, got two more sheets of uh, polycarbonate and another 150 litres of uh, compost that was uh, dumped and I'll be using this uh, when we plant uh, or sow shall we say the, uh, the wildflower seeds and flower seeds that I've got and that'll be in my next video. And these are the big marker pens that I've got and if the sunshine gets to them then uh, they do fade a bit unlike the ones that are north facing that don't get any sunshine uh, they're lasting uh, really well so this is just a review of a product that i've personally bought myself it's not sponsored in any way but uh, i do um, do uh, highly recommend that uh, as did the creator that uh, told me about it i bought a single pen to try and when I was ordering some other stuff it was easier to buy a pack of uh, 10 or 12 10 it doesn't matter it uh, it just got me free postage so they were cheaper to buy in multiples but even better when you bought several things initially so these are the Marfonia uh, Ford seed potatoes I can't see the date um, I would imagine it's going to be uh, around about April time once uh, we started to get a bit of blight I actually pulled the horns out didn't cut them off because the blight can still travel down to the potatoes so hopefully we'll uh, get some potatoes out of these and I can see some already very dry uh, looks a little bit scabby uh, this is my homemade uh, compost and uh, there's the manure this will go into my compost bin where I keep all my homemade compost after I've used them so they're spent in a fashion but as you can see uh, the manure is still there so it'll make a, a great addition for adding to the beds or whatever I decide to do with it. The weather this year has been absolutely uh, awful, especially this last the autumn. Got four seed potatoes in my homemade compost. And when we say homemade compost, we mean everything that I make myself or gather myself. That doesn't cost me anything. Uh, I did buy some Marfonia seeds about five years ago, and I just keep saving them. I will check to see if uh, there's uh, any more left in there. So there's the six potatoes that we're going to save and uh, we'll be able to uh, eat these now uh, this weekend 
it's getting close to Christmas and it won't be long before I reveal my Christmas potatoes that'll be on Christmas morning at 8 p.m. and then at 3 o'clock in the afternoon it'll be uh, the, an alternative message to the gardening community at uh, 3 o'clock the Queen says it's okay so there we go I need a parsnip today so uh, I'm going to uncover this you can see the amount of water that's lying everywhere and it looks like I've got about 15 parsnips left I've left these here so that I know exactly where I've got to dig down because these have been cut off and mulched so uh, we'll go for this one it's a good way down oh dear that one's uh, hit a bit of a stump somewhere but other than that uh, that's uh, a nice uh, nice parsnip and uh, the mulching will just protect them uh, from the cold make it easy for me to harvest if we get some severe frost which we don't normally and uh, keeping them uh, half dry helps them out uh, we'll just nip across there now and get a, a few uh, carrots uh, these are the autumn king too uh, this labels uh, an old marker has done well but it's been buried in amongst that lot but it won't be long before I'm actually uh, uh, should we finish this row he says yes they're uh, not too bad at all we'll get another big one from here Uh, they're not bad at all uh, this has been sieved but I haven't done any holes I just put some uh, seed in so uh, they uh, they've done okay for autumn kings well we've got a nice little harvest there obviously the longer the root vegetables stay in the ground the more chance they are of getting, getting some uh, damage and bits of canker but pleased with that one I've had worse out of the ground, obviously it's a lucky dip, uh, take out what we need and hopefully my parsnips will, the ones that I've sowed already before the winter, they may uh, be big enough to take by the time I've finished those uh, other 14, those 14 will basically last another 28 weeks so we've got uh, plenty of time, depends how they, how they stay in the ground, if we keep them dry I can't see any issues. Well, I couldn't help myself. I've had to have a little play with the uh, polytunnel. If you're uh, new to the channel, then I'm raising the tunnel up by a metre, mainly because it's uh, I keep bumping my head. And uh, I've got these uh, road curbs, which the, this, this wood will be sitting on. And uh, up to yet, it ain't been too bad. I've got another curb to put in there. And it doesn't matter about the level, because I'll be putting screws in the bottom there uh, so that uh, the wood's not actually touching the concrete so it can't draw any water up uh, from uh, the actual stone uh, same as what I've done on my uh, my raised uh, raised beds and similar idea to the uh, pallet collars and pallet collars have this little bit of metal there that helps it sit on each other so I've replicated by putting screws into the timbers uh, of the raised beds and uh, if you keep a gap off the floor it won't draw the moisture up and we've still got uh, two full beds of carrots there there's about 40 in each one and there's a sweet candle so once I've finished the autumn king I'll move on to these the uh, pigeon issues that I was having with the uh, winter cabbage uh, I've got a spare scaffold plank so I'll put that on just to give it a bit of extra height uh, the nets there are only to stop the pigeons from flying in they can't walk in because of the height and uh, there's been no further damage other than from whatever's uh, nibbling uh, uh, the leaves that are touching the floor and uh, I've been collecting uh, the slugs that we find and popping them into a bucket for future use no I'm not going to eat them guys and so the sprouts uh, are bulbing out because they're taking the tops off and this one here I've been actually slicing them off and um, anybody who's watching the video before but there's one of the baby sprouts that's coming off and uh, 
uh, that's just a leaf but uh, you can see them all forming on the end uh, of, the, of the sprouts there we'll see if that one reaches maturity that'll be a lovely excuse me moment the uh, sacrificial boards using the milk bottle tops uh, is working well you can see that uh, the sacrificial boards are soaking the moisture up from the wood chips and hopefully there's enough aeration there to stop it soaking into the wood and there's uh, an example of uh, my uh, my raised beds where we've got screws in the bottom keeping it off that block and uh, the wood's wet through at the moment but what you don't want is it drawing extra moisture up uh, similar to uh, these well with all this wet weather uh, the leaves are now uh, out of this uh, path and the last bag of this row can now go in here it's settled down again nicely I'll put three bags in there since we last uh, looked at it and uh, we've got uh, those bags to go but those bags on that side won't hurt as long as I've got a path to come up here with anything that uh, uh, we can find and uh, even the comfrey has decided to uh, start growing with the uh, the mold conditions we're having at the moment But uh, I'm really pleased with how uh, everything's going at the moment and like I said my next video will be on about uh, some seeds and we'll go through that so please consider subscribing please leave me a comment we need the like button and uh, the dislike button hitting depending on which uh, you prefer for the interaction I appreciate that don't mind which way it goes but the more likes uh, the more views and more places YouTube put my videos so that I can help others and others can help me till next time my friends to for now